positing the abstract realm as fundamental is causally inadequate. And what one would gain from what I'm proposing would be a solution to these three <laughs> mysteries. It would give explanatory depth to your worldview. The clip that we're about to watch features a conversation between William Lane Craig and Sir Roger Penrose. If you're not familiar with Sir Roger Penrose, he is an absolute legend in the scientific realm, specifically in cosmology. He worked alongside with Stephen Hawking to develop what is called the Penrose-Hawking Singularity Theorems. Let's dive in and then I'll give you guys some of my thoughts on the back end. There's the physical world, you know, things like tables and so on, and what we think of as, as the physical world, all this not quite clear when we go deeply into what's going on, what that really <laughs> means, but never mind about that. There's the physical world, and then there's the mental world, that's our experiences, consciousness, um, feelings about things, mm. so on. And then there's what you call the abstract world. I would be more specific about that. It's a mathematical abstraction, so we're thinking about um, how it is that... Well, let me secondly explain the mysteries, you see. Go ahead. Mm. Mystery number one, is the fact that this world of physics seems to depend so extraordinarily precisely. And the more we explore it, the more precise we see this is. Is this what Eugene Wigner famously yes. spoke of as the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics? It just seems to be a, exactly. an extraordinarily remarkable fact that mathematics, it's, that, that the universe seems to be written in that language and we, we, that we can discover it. That's exactly it, yes. Mm. It just shows that the mathematical theories, when we really understand them and when, when we get them right, they're still not quite right, well, that's clear. Uh, but nevertheless, the precision is extraordinary. So that's mystery number one. Mystery number two is how is it that conscious experience mm. can arise when the circumstances seem to be right. Now, it doesn't seem to be probably, I can't, I'm just guessing, but I don't think it's present in that glass or in the water or in the glass. <laughs> right. uh -huh. But nevertheless, it seems to come about with certainly with human beings and I think with other animals. I don't think it's unique to human Certain beings. Certain brain at all. structures somehow seem to give rise to, yes. to this consciousness. And there is a genuine mystery, mm. I think. And it's not just a matter of you know compu complicated compu computations. There's something mm. much more subtle going on. Mm. So that's mystery number two. And mystery number three is our ability to use our conscious understanding to comprehend mathematics mm. and these very uh, extraordinary uh, and self-consistent but deep ideas which are mm. very far from our experiences. So that's the how we how we comprehend mathematics, if you and, like. And in that sense, you you believe that mathematics, for instance, is discovered rather than invented by Absolutely. us. In that sense, it, it exists yes. independently. Yes, of us. right. Yes. And 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 one of those great mysteries, as you say, is the fact that we can access it. Seems yes. itself a remarkable feat of of reality. That's right, because it's so indirectly connected with our. Uh, our uh, existence and what you know how we get along in the world and that how natural selection has helped us to to survive and so on it's, yeah. it's really hard to see how these things come about from, from well, that there's there's three big mysteries there to, yep. to kick us off with bill what's your response to some of these huge, huge well areas? i want to say first and foremost that one of the most exciting things about uh roger's thinking is this deep metaphysical vision of reality that he has it's in such contrast to the sort of positivistic and verificationistic uh, pronouncements of many scientists uh, who think that philosophy is dead uh, and that these metaphysical questions are meaningless. Mm -hmm. Roger is engaged in questions that are not simply physical or scientific. These are metaphysical mm -hmm. questions. And I think that the fundamental issue that is raised by this tripartite metaphysics is the ancient philosophical problem of the one and the many. Mm. That is to say, what is the underlying unity of these three seemingly disparate realms of reality, the mental, the abstract, and the physical? Um, these realms of reality are so different so causally unconnected, it seems, that one wonders what is the underlying unity for mm. all of these. So how are these three realms related? For example, the 
mathematical abstract realm cannot be the source of the physical or conscious mental realm because abstract objects by definition are causally a feat. That's part of what it means to be an abstract object. The number seven, for example, has no effect upon anything. Mm. So the abstract realm cannot provide the source of unity. Could it be the physical realm that provides the source? Well, Rogers already mentioned the second mystery. How does the physical give rise to consciousness, particularly mm. intentionality? The intentionality is the aboutness of our mental states. I can think about my summer vacation. No physical object has intentionality. Mm. So the mental is difficult to derive from the physical, and the abstract, it seems to me, is impossible mm. because the mathematical realm is characterized by necessity. These are logically necessary truths, and by its plenitude. There are infinite realms of mathematical objects. And the physical realm, by contrast, is contingent uh, and therefore cannot ground these logical and mathematical truths, and it's plausibly finite as well. So the physical can't mm. be the support. Now, what about the mental? Could the mental be the source of these other two realms? Well, in mental causation, we do have the experience of the mental causing physical changes hmm. in our brain. I can will to get up hmm. uh, or to speak. Um, similarly, many philosophers have thought that the abstract realm is not really a separate realm that exists by itself, but it, 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 they are ideas in the mind of, uh, of consciousness hmm. that they uh, are the, the result of intellection hmm. by a mind. Now, the problem is that no human mind could be the source of the abstract realm because of its plenitude and necessity, whereas we are contingent and finite. So what I want to invite Roger <laughs> to comment on is why couldn't the mental realm include an infinite consciousness? That is to say, an omniscient mind which has created the physical realm and which is the source of the abstract mathematical realm. This would solve the problem of the one and the many and give you an underlying unity for this um, tripartite metaphysic that you affirm. And, and what you've just described sounds suspiciously like God, uh, Bill. <laughs> yes, but, uh, it did sound suspiciously <laughs> like that, yes. Roger, what do you say to that? <clears throat> well, you see, you're putting it as an interesting... Uh, you're putting it in in the mental world, if you like, whereas I tend to put it in the in the in the, in the Platonic mathematical world. You mm. see, that that I don't quite see why. Uh, I mean, how do you drive the precision? You see, just a, a mental thing doesn't seem to me. But I I don't quite see why it helps, if you like. I mean, you can postulate a, a, a super mental being or something. I mean, what, uh, does it have a mental existence without a physical one? Is that the idea? Yes. So yes. There would so be that some, this uh, mental, this this mind, this yeah, omniscient mind, has created a contingent physical realm. Yeah. And is the source of the conceptual realm as well. I can't quite see. Well, you could say that it contains all that because it's so infinite that it contains yes. the entire um, mathematical world in yes. a sense. Um, but does it, where does it come from? What's its, uh... Well, it would have to be metaphysically necessary in order to be the source of yes. broadly logically necessary mathematical so truths, and I would say other <laughs> sorts of truths, ethical truths that are plausibly necessary. Yes, it's very curious. You see, you have the mental world sort of being a necessary. Right. And I have the mathematical world somehow being uh, being a necessity yeah. because it's somehow <laughs> well, mathematical I, I, truths I, I, I somehow. <laughs> yes. I appreciate the necessity, mm. but the problem is that the abstract realm has no causal powers. Mm -hmm. These are causally a feat, objects that never come into contact with things physically. They can't move them or shove them or pull them. They exert no forces. They are not minds, and so they can't make decisions to cause things. They're not causal agents. So it seems to me that 
positing the abstract realm as fundamental is causally inadequate. And what one would gain from what I'm proposing would be a solution to these three <laughs> mysteries. It would give explanatory depth to your worldview. I don't quite see how it explains anything. Um, I mean, does it... I mean, you're talking from a perspective of a religious person, and therefore one's thinking of this as somehow... I mean, specific religions are much more specific than... than right, and that's than why I, I grimaced a bit when you said <laughs> from a religious perspective. Yes. It's a philosophical perspective, but... Okay, okay. It no, I'm happier with that, because then, I, you see, this is what I have more trouble if one's trying to make it specific in, in certain directions uh, as regards one religion or another. But if it's just such an abstract notion, it's not that I'm necessarily unhappy with it, except that I don't know what to do with it, because it's, it's mm. so vague. Mary Leng, who is a philosopher of mathematics at the University of Liverpool, has said, on Platonism, the applicability of mathematics to the physical world is, is a happy coincidence, <laughs> which just seems incredible. By contrast, we know that minds can design things. And the view that there is an omniscient uh, mind who has designed the physical world on the mathematical blueprint that it had in mind is a very ancient perspective that goes back to Middle Platonism and people like Philo of Alexandria, who said that the intelligible world, the intelligible cosmos, exists first in the mind of the logos, the, the divine intellect, and then is instantiated in the physical world uh, by the logos who creates the world on this blueprint. And that seems to me to be uh, a good solution to the one and the many problem. Mind is the most logical causal factor of the three to bring about the consciousness, to bring about the, the, the mathematical and logical truths, and to bring about the physical realm itself. But because that leads into the the arena of religion or the arena of God, you can sort of feel that reservation, feel that hesitation, which I really think is a shame. And I think it points to the fact that in people's minds, there's such a clear divide between the philosophical realm or, or the sort of intellectual realm and then the religious realm. We can't just stay here in this totally abstract realm as we're talking about a mind that is the you know, the source for everything else in the universe. At some point, the very logical next question to ask is, okay, so what do we do with this? And that really was what Penrose was saying as well. I don't know what to do with that. What's, how does that advance anything? How is that helpful or fruitful anyway to posit a mind as the unifying causal factor for these other two dimensions of reality and really for the rest of reality itself? How is that helpful? And I would actually agree with him that if, that was where everything stopped, it really wouldn't be that helpful. But where it becomes helpful is that it opens up a huge window into a second and a third and a fourth question, which is, has this mind revealed himself in any particular way to humanity? And is there a purpose for humanity? Did, does this mind have some intended purpose for humanity? And downstream from the concept of a basic, meaning meaning essential, fundamental mind, are all of these other questions that then tie into the big questions of philosophy. What are we for? Why are we here? Where are we going? These dots begin to connect in ways that are extremely relevant. And obviously, this is just the tip of the iceberg or just the very first thing that could be said about this. But I do think establishing mind as the essential original component of reality is important because once that is established, the answers to so many of the other critical and huge questions about life and the human experience begin to make sense. And if you're interested in those questions and the answers to those questions, that's what I'm attempting to tackle on this channel. Not everything could be covered in one video, but I'll give you guys one video here to sort of take the ball and move it forward to the next step. With that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll, I'll see you guys hopefully in this video or the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye.